One of the types of uh, hypothesis testing we can do about one sample would be a large sample test about the mean mu. Now we have two conditions for this. One is that we take a random sample from the selected population. If it's not a random sample, it's not going to be worth as much as it would if it was, certainly. And uh, if we don't, aren't taking from the population of interest in the first place, well, then we have basically a worthless test, or at least worthless in trying to make inferences about that population. The second one is that the sample size is sufficiently large, and in order for this to be the case, we need n to be at least 30. Now, the three different types of tests that we can run in this instance are two-tailed, so we're testing whether or not the parameter mu is equal to a value. So if it's too much above that value, we've got a problem with it, and if it's too much low, too much lower than that, we have a problem with it as well. A left-tailed test, we're only interested if the value is lower than the proposed value. So if we're trying to see if people are studying enough for for a, say a test or a class they're in and we believe that they're studying less than eight hours a week we make the alternative hypothesis mu is less than eight whereas the, the null is of course mu equals eight so if we find that students aren't aren't studying enough then we will reject the null and you know we'll do what we have to do with that if however you know say the X bar turns out to be 25. Well, clearly they're not they're studying enough. They're not they're not below where they need to be, so we would fail to reject. We certainly don't believe that the actual average would be equal to 8, you know, given 25 or, or whatever as an X bar, but all we all we can do is not we can, just can't prove that it is less than the 8. And in a similar fashion, the right tail test tests to see if the mean is greater than some value. The statistic that we're going to use is the z-statistic. We have 30, which means our data will be approximately normal. And the formula for the z is uh, the same as it was before. The value, which is x-bar, minus the mean over the standard deviation. Standard deviation of x-bar is sigma over root n. If we don't have sigma, we can certainly substitute s for it. Here's an example. So say we have a random sample of 100 observations from a population with a known standard deviation of 60. And that sample mean was 110 from the 100 people. So we're going to do two tests. One is a right-tailed test where we determine if uh, the value is greater than 100 and alpha will be 0.05. And we'll use the same alpha for part B where we do a doesn't equal so we're doing a two-tailed test. All right, I've set up a couple Z charts here. Uh, for this one, we're going to do part A, and for this one, we're going to do part B. So our right-tailed test will be over here. So the test statistic is going to be the same for both. I've calculated it uh, by just putting in the values, and it comes out to 1.666, or about 1.67 will be fine. Now. Alpha is 0.05, so the entire level of alpha must be on the right side. So as you can see here, it's greater than, it points to the right. We're going to try to find that. So since the entire level of alpha goes to the right, I've got two options. I can take the inverse norm of 0.95 to get the value, or I can take the inverse norm of 0.05, find the, the left side value, and just put it over on the right. I will do the latter. So inverse norm of 0.05 comes out to be negative 1.645 so the positive side will be 1.645 so z of alpha equals 1.645 so let's set up our threshold so one and a half is about here so maybe it's about right here All right, or not quite straight, but that's okay. So this is my rejection region, and you know, and of course anything above it as well. I haven't drawn it all there, but that's fine. Now, so this is rejection region RR for that rejection region. So the critical value here is 
1.645 and that is our line. Now our test statistic is greater than 1.645 it's going to fall into the rejection region so we're going to reject so if you can see here let me grab a different color so that's going to fall you know right about here so we are going to reject Now, part B is a two-tailed test, so much like the confidence intervals, we're going to take alpha, cut it in half. So alpha over 2 is 0.025. So now we're going to take the inverse norm of 0 0.025 and find each of the critical values. There will be two. There we go, so negative 1.96 and positive 1.96 are the values we'll, we'll need. So there you go. All right, so let's come up with those. 1.96 is very close to two, so right about there. And there. So let's it gives us two rejection regions. There we go. So this is a rejection region and this is a rejection region. Now our value doesn't change. All right, our value 1.67 is the same as it was before. But now it doesn't quite make the threshold. 1.67 falls right about here, which is not quite in the rejection region. So in this case, we fail to reject. Now we have differing conclusions. We've run two different tests, and we have different conclusions. Uh, that's simply because this area is 5%, and this area is only 2.5%. And we'll get into p-values in a little while, and I'll show you how that's going to relate to these.